Now, I'm sure we've all seen examples like this, either in live presentations or educational videos. So much going on with the educator speaking verbatim, word for word, what's on the slide. And you might choose to focus on trying to read the slide or listen to the educator's voice. You may think that the topic is very complicated or that there is just too much going on. There's a scientific reason for why this is not an effective way to teach or deliver information, regardless of discipline. The scientific reason is related to the theory of cognitive load, which I believe should be an ever-present consideration in our approach to learning and teaching. Ironically, talking about the theory of cognitive load can sometimes lead to cognitive overload. So I'm going to break this down into three principles of information processing in relation to cognitive load, while also identifying how we can try and avoid cognitive overload. So firstly, there is intrinsic or sometimes called essential processing. And this happens when we receive information through our senses into our working memory, which has a limited short-term capacity for retaining information. When information is received through our senses, either by hearing or seeing, the working memory aims to process the information and build mental representations or schema of the information presented. The level of processing here relates to the complexity and quantity of information the learner is receiving. Therefore, overload of intrinsic or essential processing can occur when the information being received is too complicated for the learner, or the information is so disconnected from the learner's current belief system that they either disengage or trying to process it overwhelms their cognitive capacity. Overload can also happen when too much information is being presented at once or at too fast a pace or terminology being used is not at the appropriate level for the learners. So to help avoid overload, consider chunking information down into smaller pieces, delivering them at a slower pace and give pauses for reflection and processing time. Also try to use clear, relatable terminology and vocabulary and try to simplify the delivery of information in order to gain better understanding. The second principle of information processing is germane processing. And this aims to make sense of the information being processed in the limited capacity of the working memory by linking it to prior knowledge that allows for longer term retention. The level of processing here depends on the learner's ability and motivation to understand and interpret new information and link it to existing knowledge. Germain processing doesn't suffer from being overloaded, rather the opposite, underutilization. This is when learners have the cognitive capacity available, but do not use it to engage in active processing during learning. This can happen when learners are receiving information they find uninteresting or of little value, or they don't have the opportunity to apply it. So strategies to utilize germane processing include introducing your learners to retrieval practice or other active learning approaches. And the third principle of information processing is extraneous processing and refers to processing during learning that is not intended. This type of load can be caused by distractions in the learning environment. The learner's physical or mental state, are they hungry or stressed, for example, or by things that we can address, such as poor learning design or instructional strategies, such as excessive direct instruction, or when irrelevant information is being included. Extraneous overload is when so much of the learner's cognitive capacity is dedicated to this extra processing that they do not have enough remaining capacity to engage in the intrinsic or germane processing of information that is needed for effective learning. So in summary, all humans have limitations when processing information. Our short-term working memory would prefer to receive information in chunks or pieces that are clear, concise, and delivered at an appropriate pace to allow for processing. And for information to be deeply understood and retained in long-term memory, we should provide opportunities to link new information to prior knowledge through active learning techniques. 
And finally, we can consider and try to reduce extraneous cognitive load by considering the learning environment, our learning design, and acknowledging that our learners are humans and maybe have external factors that are impacting on them. So perhaps a little empathy and flexibility can help. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful. And in our next video, we're going to look at how education researcher Richard Mayer has built upon these principles of information processing in relation to cognitive load theory to provide evidence-based approaches for designing digital educational content. So thanks for watching and hit like if you got value.